We're good. Good. Okay. Richard Kaplan here with a, another pair of desirable vintage limiters. Uh, in this case, the Federal 864U. We've got a pair of them. Notice that they're a little bit different. And let me explain. This is a very early, very large limiter, not the customary one, two, or three rack space limiter. This is an extremely large limiter um, using old style tubes, and the big ones, and it is basically just a one knob limiter in its original form. This one is stock. This one is stock, but has had one of the knobs moved from the rear panel to the front panel to make it more accessible when it's rack mounted in a studio. Um, what limiters were originally invented for was for radio stations so that they wouldn't over modulate their transmitter. When the FCC gave a license to a radio station it would be for a specific power output. So you had radio stations that had licenses for a thousand watts and licenses for 10,000 watts and some stations had as much as 50,000 watts clear channel stations but if they went over their licensed maximum there would be a hefty fine and the FCC was constantly monitoring virtually every radio station in the country for that over modulation and when the radio stations realized they had to do something to keep from over modulating the limiter was put into the chain and what a limiter is basically as I have explained before is a robot inside a box and that robot has his hand on a fader and when he sees a peak or a big one coming he brings the fader down to a certain point and then as it goes away brings the fader back up. Now there are limiters that have many controls as to how that's done. This is a one knob limiter and that one knob is the input gain. I'll show on the bottom one which only has that one knob on the front panel that it is the gain going into the amplifier, the tube amplifier circuit and the limiter circuit. There's also a switch for in and out which would determine whether the limiter was in the circuit or whether it was just going through the tube amplification uh, uh, chain of the limiter without any limiter circuit in. And in the uh, recording studio what it was eventually used for the limiter was used so that you didn't over modulate as you went to tape or in present day as you went to your digital uh, converter uh, because digital distortion is especially horrible and the limiter was a valuable tool and originally the only special effect that an engineer had um, besides EQ. So this was considered a special effect rather than when used in the recording studio rather than just as a necessary component to keep from overloading because as you bring the limiter in stronger and stronger the sound uh, takes on a uh, quality particular to each manufacturer and model number of limiter. Now this second one has a second knob on the front that is merely the knob from the back panel that controlled the threshold of when the limiting started. So as you bring the input gain up you would reach a threshold uh, depending upon what the level going through was where the limiter started into action and the um, limiter has a 
unique kind of VU meter on it where when you're in limiting mode the needle will rest at zero and the more limiting you do the, the, the lower the threshold is set or the higher the input gain is set the meter will start to deflect showing how many dB have been taken out of the output signal. When you're in bypass mode the needle flips down to infinity or zero output and will come up as you bring the input knob up. This knob will have no control whatsoever since the limiter circuit has been bypassed and it will show you what the actual output level of the device is. Now this limiter in its original manufacturing had one set of defective parts that didn't show up for several years because it was a part that was intended to last forever but after a few years showed se severe signs of degradation and for that reason many people have bypassed using this as a preferred recording device but with the help of the genius engineer electrical designer Chris Brunt I found the problem and fixed it so that it's a great sounding limiter in virtually every application. I used it primarily for limiting drum overheads and room mics for drums and also for guitars or vocals. In radio stations, of course, the whole signal that the radio station was broadcasting went through it, so you'd get everything, all program material going through the limiter, including talk shows, music shows with the uh, needle drops or tapes playing in the, you know, into the uh, s signal. So it had to sound good on everything, and this limiter does sound good on everything when the couple of defective parts are substituted with high quality modern parts. Other than that, it's one of the best limiters I've ever known. I love it. I used it extensively. And uh, here it is for your perusal. Uh, I thank you. Richard Kaplan, over and out.